Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to open up and potentially repair a Kingfisher watering timer. Now, the way this thing's meant to work is you're going to have a flashing light if there's batteries and everything's working okay. Everything sets it off, no water can flow through. And if you just turn it on, you'll notice you get water flow. That's all the way through. And if you turn it off, prevents water flow. That's how the timer is meant to work. Now quite often people leave the cover off, you get water ingress, it's been too cold, maybe too damp. For whatever reason these things can stop working quite easily but they're quite easy to open up and repair and in this video I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is to turn the batteries out. Make sure everything's in the off position. I've got these uh, nifty batteries which if I hold I get full power on them. The next thing you need to do is to remove a couple of screws. There is one hidden. It's a simple precision screwdriver kit, nothing special. Take the screws out there. Also remove these two, they are keyed, so they won't go back in the wrong place. For this model, the screw is hidden in this area. I know some other models you can have screws sort of dotted around here. They're very difficult to feel for because this is very thick plastic. Unfortunately, you just have to lift up the plastic around until you find the hole and here I found the last screw. Leave that screw in. You should now just be able to withdraw this quite easily. First thing we need to do is remove these two screws. Now you should be able to take this out the way and expose the circuit board. Now, I'm no electronics expert, but if any of these chips are blown, you might be able to desolder and resolder some new components. In the case of this, with water damage, luckily nothing was damaged on the board. Everything seemed okay. The next stage is to have a look at the gearing and the motor. So on this unit, as I mentioned, I had water damage. The cover was left off for a number of days in the rain. The unit filled up with water, stopped working completely. The first thing that happened is the, the batteries drained completely, so I replaced them and it still didn't work. So what I did is opened it up and found that the motor was full of water. I'll show you now. Now, as you can see, these three green locations are kind of heat sealed in. You can just pop them up with a bit of force. As I've already done this one, it, it won't be too difficult, but you can just see a lip there. If you can get your screwdriver in there, you should be able to simply pop. There we go. That exposes the gearing. It's worth noting that these gears are all the same. It's also worth them going back in. Just pull all the gears out. And if you notice, I'm laying them on the board in the same order they're coming out in. This should make it easier to reassemble. Now watch out for these pins. These pins are quite loose and they can come out. I, I just leave them in, they didn't bother me, but it's worth noting here there is grease. No point cleaning that up because it's handy for the gearing. You don't want that to dry up because the plastic gears will wear out. This screw key you can leave in. There's no need to remove that for now unless you have problems with this or if there's something stuck in there. There is nothing holding this in. And that exposes the motor. And the limit switch for the valve. Simply push the motor out from the top and that's the motor. Now on this unit with batteries fitted, a fresh pair of batteries, I had no drive and on initial disassembly I found quite a lot of water stuck in the unit even at the bottom there and the motor was dripping with water. Even after I'd left this thing to dry for a few days the motor was still dripping with water so it's definitely worth checking this motor. If there's power at these terminals but the motor is not turning you know you have an issue with the motor. If there's no power at the terminals and you have the switches in the on position, you know there's potentially a wiring fault or a power fault or a potential problem with some of the microchips on the board. Now I'm going to show you how to disassemble the motor. First thing we need to do is to take off this small gear. Now this should just come off by hand with a bit of force. The next thing we need to do is just have a look at these tabs on the side here. Maybe you can see this. There we go. There's two metal tabs opposite each other. They're holding the plastic sort of backplate onto the motor housing. They need to be 
forced up. So forced up and out in that direction and that direction. And then put a screwdriver in between there or there and lever the plastic away from the housing. Careful not to damage the terminals here. There we go. And that exposes the motor stator and rotor, if you like. We just withdraw this. There we go. So in here, it's worth giving it a good clean. The only thing that should really be in here uh, are the two magnets and a bit of grease. The magnets shouldn't be cracked, there shouldn't be any rust, it should be quite clean. It's fairly clean. Now, the rotor with the winding, this on my unit was quite wet. As you can see, there's a bit of corrosion there, so I dried this out the best I could. This needs to be clean, straight. And finally, the brush contactors should be in line. As you can see, there is one tab bent over at the back there. I'll straighten that up. But these need to contact and give power to the rotor spindle. So for cleaning, if you do have water ingress like I did, or any other kind of dirt, with using a cotton bud, these work perfectly. Get right down in the corners and just pick up any residual. So you can just see a bit of water down there still. Missed that bit last time. Any residual water, just take it nice and slow because you don't want to have to come in and do this all again, but the cotton bud works really, really well for all that. Motor are clean as well, this plastic faceplate. So now you've given everything a clean and you're ready to put everything back together. So the first thing is the motor again. As they say, reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. So. The easiest way to do this is to put this back in here. You'll feel a bit of resistance, which is not... There we go. It will have a tendency to move forward, push it back. So now we can get the back of the motor back on. You need to line up the tabs that we removed with the back of the motor again. As you can see, the poles are 90 degrees to the brushes. So whether we put it on this way or this way, it should make no difference. Slide. This spindle needs to go in between these two brushes. Slide that through into the hole. Push that back in. Give it a pop. Now you can bend these tabs back over, but I tend to just leave them because little chance of this plastic moving ever. And if you do have to come back in here, that's already done. Give the spindle a quick spin and make sure that spins freely and you can feel the magnets. That's important. Put the gear back on. Don't push this too far like I did, as you can see that's gone a bit too far back down, but you can simply just prop that back up. That should be just below the head there. There you go. That should move freely. We know that the faceplate was in the off position when we took the thing apart. Off means these two are kind of facing that way. These are straight, right? Make sure these are both in the off position before you put batteries in. Make sure the motor isn't going to get wound up against anything. Make sure that's nice and free. Go ahead and put batteries in. As you can see, the motor's running straight away. Motor runs. Careful, and I don't, don't try this at home, kids. But when you put your finger against that, the motor's still running. If that stops as soon as you touch it, you know that the torque in the motor is quite poor and you've still got a problem with the motor here. Here we haven't. The motor's just going to keep running here because what it's looking for is the limit switch to, to fire when, once that valve opens. There you go, motor stops. The valve is in the closed position. What it's looking for is a feedback loop to understand that the unit is closed. Without that feedback loop, the motor will keep running. Eventually, your batteries will just die out. So you might have a problem with that switch. If that motor doesn't stop when you rock the switch around and both are, of these are in the off position, then you might have a problem with that switch or the valve or, or the interface between the two or the wiring to the circuit board. Just as another test, we can turn this anti-clockwise so the motor will come on. There we go, motor's coming on. Nothing's gonna happen until the valve opens. Let's open the valve manually. Got the click, we get the feedback loop. Valve's open, you see. Okay, so now the, we know the motor works with the valve feedback. Time to reassemble the unit, we're quite happy with the way things are. So, as again, both switches off. Let's just remove the batteries. 
time to reassemble. So the first thing we need to do is put the motor back into this plastic faceplate. Again, make sure everything's clean and dry. The two tabs on the motor go inside these two tabs in there, like so. Just give that a push until it's home. That's home. Now we need to feed everything back in. Make sure you don't get any snags on the wires. The wires shouldn't pull. These can pull off very easily. Just give it a few light taps until we get it all the way down. There we go. That gear should be exposed. I've got all my pins installed. The grease is still there. Everything's nice and clean. The valve's in the off position. Get the first yellow gear. Slip that on. Now, this is important. Make sure that when you turn the yellow gear, it's tight. That means you've got good engagement with the valve gear. If this spins freely, you know that these two are unengaged. And this black plastic probably isn't down far enough. You can see the whole gear system working there. There we go, finally, we have a full loop, as you can see. As you can see, we have the motor. Everything turns. You can see everything turning slowly. Now, this is a really good time, again, to put batteries in and check that the operation is as desired. Started up straight away. Both of these are in the off position, I know they are. But what it does, it does a full loop. It opened up and it closed, and it looks for the looks for the closed feedback loop on that valve. So anti-clockwise, just one click. Valve's open. Clockwise one click. Valve closes, perfect. We know this works. Let's continue with the reassembly. Just check everything's down, pins are down. As you can see, we have holes here which line up with these pins. Again, make sure there's no snags on any of the wires. Next thing we need to do is to put the circuit board back into the faceplate. Close around that way. Now, these three holes double up as the holes to attach the faceplate. So the only other screw that goes in this unit goes in here. It looks like there is another screw all right here, but I didn't find a screw when I disassembled the unit for the first time. So that one stays empty. You might have a screw there. Everything's clear. Wires are loose. Faceplate is ready to go back on. Ah, see, I've got a problem here. I've come into a problem. I've assembled the faceplate without the red and black wire in the right place. I want to go back and do this and take this faceplate off, take the circuit board out, put the red and black wire behind there, so they come out there. See, that's how it's meant to be. Just tuck the rest of the wires down the side. Now we've made a bit of a meal of this, you can glue that back on. If you're unhappy about the way that came off if you want to take it off a bit better you could apply some heat and maybe lift it with a flat blade or something like that put the switches back on both of them are the same and that's about it really put the batteries back in and let's test it worth noting as well that you need to make sure you get contact on the batteries and the batteries are actually contacting the terminals i had an issue where this red wire was actually preventing the battery from contacting the terminal Again, look straight away, there's a full loop, switch, there, there we go, powered on, batteries go in, yellow lights go in, there we go, turn to the on position, turn to the off position, and that is how to disassemble, reassemble and repair your Kingfisher or other watering timer. Thanks for watching.